All right, so this lesson is about connecting the breadboard to the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 2. You can see we have an uh, anti-static mat and uh, we have the breakout pins, the breadboard itself, and the ribbon cable. And I'm wearing a static strap connected to the static workstation so that I can now safely take the pie out on the static mat um, and work with it without doing any damage to the hardware. So the first thing is to install this, these breakout pins onto this breadboard. So you can see this breadboard has got uh, red and blue lines. The red line is the positive rail and the blue line is the negative rail. And once we hook up the uh, breakout uh, board, uh, one of these rails will be 3.3 volts and one of the rails will be 5 volts. And so you can see vertically uh, it's broken into groups of five holes. Each hole has an electrical connection below it. So that when you plug one of these in to the hole, now you've made uh, a connection to the ground, the negative side of this rail. And so these are all connected horizontally uh, across. So this top five sets of holes are all electrically the same connection together. So you can plug this into any one of these 25 holes along the top row and it will be the ground. Same thing with the positive. So I think this is going to hook it up like this. So you can see the negative 5 volt is going to go to this top negative rail and the plus 5 volt is going to go to this plus rail. Now the inside pins here uh, now what you have here is a different connectivity. So these are connected vertically instead of horizontally. So the power rails are horizontally connected. Each of these columns are connected instead of the rows. So you can see here you have uh, A, B, C, D, E. So all A, B, C, D, E of this column is an electrical connection. So you can put this in any one of these holes there and that will be considered connected to that column. So basically you can wire uh, you can wire pieces together by plugging for instance a resistor lead into uh, this column. I think they're numbered. Yeah, there's numbers on the columns. One, two, three, four. So if you plug a resistor into this column 1 here, maybe connection A, then you plug a wire into column 1, connection B, the wire and the resistor are now connected together. So you have a lot, let's see, how many are there there? 30 total columns separated in the middle. So now you have 30 columns in the top half and 30 columns in the bottom half. So the top columns are not connected to the bottom columns. So that's how we wire up a breadboard. So now we're going to take this, take it out of its styrofoam keeper there, and you'll see on the bottom here we have the electrical pins coming out uh, and we're going to plug those pins into this breadboard. So you can see you want to make sure that you get these things lined up correctly. You want the two, the minus 5 volts connected to the minus rail there and the plus, plus 5 volts connected to the plus rail. Now you can see down below here you now have broken out all the GPIO pins. Now some of these GPIO pins also carry voltage. You can see there 
starting from the left where near it says www.canikit.com you can see there's a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt pin for uh, coming off from the GPIO connector and there are some grounds there but you can also see the GPIO pins for instance SDA and SCL in the lower left corner those are the I squared C GPIO pins kind of dedicated for I squared C bus and then you can see numbers like at the bottom 4, 17, 22 those are actual GPIO general purpose IO pin numbers Okay, so we're going to plug this in. We're going to try to get this. We're going to try to get these pins here. The 5 volt and 3.3 volt are going to try. We're going to try to get those all the way into this first row, into row, into column one. Okay, so that that would be that would give us the most room. So we're going to we're going to line those up. And now you can see, if we can get a focus here, how they're just kind of sitting in there. We have our 3.3 volt plus and minus sitting there, and our 5 volt there. And everything is nice and easy. And then we're just going to apply even pressure. And plug the whole thing in. So there you have it. You now have... A good connection for the Raspberry Pi um, into the breadboard and now we can put jumper wires in here so now you can see if you want to wire up to jump uh, up to GPIO 4 you just plug one of these in to this row I'm sorry this column that corresponds to GPIO 4 and you now have a connection to GPIO 4 and you can run that over here into the kind of a general purpose area where you can put LEDs and switches. Okay, so now we're going to connect up the ribbon cable. It's basically you just connect one end here and one end there. Um, you will see on this ribbon cable that there is a uh, kind of a protruding uh, piece of plastic here that is called uh, an alignment pin um, and you can see that there's a protruding piece of plastic here so and then when you look at the socket you can see there's a slot right there so we're going to take the one that's protruding near the ribbon cable here and plug it in over here and so you can see, you can see how the, well, can you see? You can see how that slot's going to line up there, and that helps you to make sure you, you, that you get the pins aligned. And so we're just going to plug that in like this and push down on it. Careful you don't hurt your fingers on the bottom pins are kind of sharp. So that it's seated nice and correctly in there. See that? Okay, so now we're plugged in and mated to the breadboard. We're just going to come over here to the pie. And this is where it's a little dangerous because it's very easy to get these offset and you can bend the pins. So you have to make sure that all of these pins are lined up here before you plug it in. And you can see it's gonna it's gonna stick over on the sides a little bit. Hard to do that. So now we're lined up and you can feel that we're in there. You're just gonna apply a steady press down, force down. And so now you can see it's it's lined up. And it looks like we have a good connection all the way across. And now we have our breadboard attached to our pie and we are ready to make circuits.